Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the channel. Today is Monday, February 24th. I just closed my first trade of the week. As you can see, I am still long that small position from EuroCAD last week. I took that trade on Wednesday and the trade still is up over 100 pips from the entry. So my stop loss is locked and I'm still holding a small piece of that. This morning, I was long GBPNZD for about 20 minutes. It quickly started to break down, so I actually closed the trade in two different pieces. Let's flip over here to trading view and I'm gonna break it down for you. Now, if you're new to the channel, I wanna tell you that you should probably go back and watch the live recaps from at least last Thursday and Friday so you can see that huge EuroCAD trade and why I'm still holding that. Now, coming into the morning this morning, I kinda of wanna put that trade aside let that continue to develop because the stop loss is locked. I can't lose any money on that. And I want to look for other good trade opportunities. I want that next one good trade, right? This morning, we come to GBPNZD. We see on the 15 minute, if I blow this up, we see on the 15 minute that we're down towards the 200 EMA. That's this white line here. The TDI, the EMAs, overall price action even tells us that we are in an uptrend. You see price moving higher, the EMA is moving higher, TDI holding that buy zone. So most things are telling us to be long biased. So we go then, ugh, we go down to the one minute and we look for our D1 entry. And that's what we got here at 515. You see that falling price action, you see the rising RSI, and that creates the divergence. That's labeled here with my purple line. The RSI is the green line on the bottom down here. So that falling price, rising TDI, creates the bullish divergence, which goes in the direction of the higher time frame trend, which then tells us that this could present a long opportunity. It pulls back to the 50 and actually broke back to the 50. And that's when I got in the trade is it pulled back, held the 50 EMA and looked like it was gonna then make a move towards the 200 and then the 800 above that. However, as you can see, it quickly broke back under the 50. And as soon as this TDI started to pull back down under the 50 value of the TDI, I closed half the trade for 11 pips of loss. The rest of the trade I closed right here before it reached my full stop at 2.0415. So the trade was quick, I cut it quick, and I think what's really good to take out of this, for me, I followed the rules, the result doesn't matter. I traded it like a C setup, which means I traded it very small because the 15 minute setup wasn't perfect. I'll go over that in a second. But the regressive risk here, closing half the trade as it breaks down and then closing the other half or other piece of it, whatever you leave in, as it's getting closer to your stop, makes a lot of sense to me. The idea behind it is, if I'm in at 10 lots on my entry, why take the full stop at 10 lots? You can find characteristics of your trades that tell you that they're not working for you. And if you can identify those characteristics, they can be exit signals to say, okay, at this, I'm gonna close five lots. And then at this, I'm gonna close another three. And then I'll let the rest of it stop me out, the other two lots stop me out at the full stop. And then you're saving yourself money, keeping yourself alive longer to get in line with the market that day. So that's my thought here, get out of this thing. I know it could hold the 200, I know it could come higher, but this isn't right yet, it's a little early. There's no reason to jump in. And the reason I took it as a C setup is because the TDI swapped zones today. You see how it starts in the sell zone and comes into the buy zone. Swapping like that tells me probabilities aren't the best. It could be better if it was in the buy zone all day. And on top of that, this huge, huge candle to start the week was on this NZD news. So maybe this is some type of a pump into news to set the divergence on top here coming in from last week. And we're actually seeing bearish movement now get priced in as we get into the New York and London sessions as soon as they get kicking here. You see what I'm saying? This is that D2 idea potentially coming off the 50. You break the 50, you go to the 200, come to the 200, next stop would be the 800 down below. So it could be moving way lower, way lower. And that's why you wanna just get out, look for the next one good trade. So, so you can see on the 15 minute, I mean, all my markups, this is all from the videos last week. You wanna make sure you go see that. But now overnight last night on the coronavirus news, pushing back up towards that 800 EMA, retesting the 50 here overnight, perfect TDI, that tells you you're gonna get more bullish movement. And already today, it's maxed out its average daily range. You see that up here at 65, that horizontal green line, on top and bottom, that shows us the average daily range. So it could keep coming higher. You see it's broken average daily range a couple of times last week, but probably not much higher today. I think that this is starting to slow down because of the fact that it's reached its average daily range. So this trade, I'm not worried about. The stop is locked way in profit. I'm not thinking about that at all. I am going to keep my eye on GBPNZD because as we break the 200 here on the 15 minute, I think I'm probably going to see this come lower. So I'm glad to be out of it. I'm not going to jump in short. I'm just going to look for the next one good trade. It's 6.15. I'll keep you guys posted. It's Money Monday, so we'll see what happens. I wanna make sure I let you guys know as well, the free webinar that we're hosting next Saturday is actually almost full. They were at like 244 of the 250 seats. Now, if you sign up and you reserve, 
your seat for free, the link is down below, you're going to get the recording and you're still going to be able to see it. But I can only fit 250 people in there live. So if you want to be there live, you got to sign up with the link down below and you got to be ready at 9 a.m. to jump in the link because it's just first come, first serve. There's no reservations. There's no nothing like that. First come, first serve, Saturday the 29th at 9 a.m. New York time. It's going to be igniting and sustaining a, a consistently profitable trading process. It's actually what's on the whiteboard back there. So make sure you're signed up for that. The link is down below. Like I said, 6.15 here. I'll come back in a little bit and keep you guys posted if we take any trades and we'll let EuroCAD do its thing. Maybe we break 143.90 and we head to 144. All right, guys, I'm back. It is just about seven o'clock. It's 6.54. As you can see, I'm now short GBP and ZD. I know I told you in that last clip that I wasn't going to get short, but the one minute set up a really good risk reward opportunity that I think I can be involved in cover that small little loss we just took on the long idea and actually make the day profitable. So the three positions I have in right now at seven o'clock on Monday morning, EuroCAD still long, stop is locked, like I said, we're gonna stop talking about that as much. And now I have two short positions on GBP NZD, one at 2.0413 and then one at 2.0409. So about four pips apart, that's where my risk is split between the two trades. It's the same amount of risk that I put on the earlier trade. So I'm not tossing big size around as I'm trying to confirm that I'm in alignment with the direction this wants to move today. If this had given me more confirmations as it was moving higher here briefly while I was in the trade, that it was going to go higher, I could have even added to that and put more risk onto it. But I wasn't 100% convinced that the long idea was going to work, which is why I cut it early and which is why I traded it small initially. That's what makes it a C setup. So now getting the short signal, I don't want to just jump in and be like, oh, it's not moving higher, so it's got to go down. No, it could come It could come back down lower. It could still go higher, right? It could still hold that 200 EMA on the 15 minute of support and still come higher. So instead of just jumping back in and going, you know, balls deep, big size into the short idea, you go in with the same size that you went in with the previous idea, trying to make sure that, okay, since the long didn't work, maybe short does work. It's a D2 ID on the 15 minute. That does all make sense. It follows our rules and this is good risk reward. So it's within the edge. It's within the system, but let's go into it slowly. Let's add a little size here. Let's let it develop. Let's let it move in our direction. And then we'll add more size to it as it continues to come lower here. So let's take a look up nine pips now and about five pips. Look, 12, seven. So now we're going to get some push on this, but this is what I liked about the look at the TDI, look at the EMAs, everything here telling me that this is going to come down. And again, where it comes from is this 15 minute idea, which is marked up at the 50. I'm actually short down here. This markup is based on the higher time frame idea of the D2 from Friday into today. We broke the 50, we consolidated at the 200, broke the 200, now retested the 200. We look to then make our way down towards the 800 as this thing falls over. I think something we need to keep in mind, and it might be a reason to take the trade fairly soon, and or at least take some off, in about 20 pips, we're going to reach average daily range. Eh, a little bit more than 20 pips, maybe 30 pips until we reach average daily range. That means we've reached how much this pair moves on an average day. So I'm not going to be super greedy in this counter trend idea and think that it has to come to the 800 today, but you saw like with the EuroCAD trade, I knew that this D2 idea down here from Wednesday could come to the 800 and it did. And that's why I'm still in it, right? So we want to see the ideas through as best you can. Look here, we're getting more push now. 2.0395. I'm up 16. And again, I called this entry in the VIP chat for everybody. Let's see anyone short GM with me? Because I know that some of them were asking me right here 639 i'm taking gn short stop 20436 same size as the long idea like i told you guys 20413 is the entry now we're getting the push that we were looking for i'm up 100 in eurocad and 17 and then 12 so it's just about seven o'clock i'll come back on and let you guys know how these trades play out i'm not locked in profit yet the stops are still at their original position i want to let these go i'm going to cover the long loss and make sure that i lock the stop and end this trade short profitable so that the day is profitable that we start our week profitable that's the focus that's what we're doing right now we're managing the risk real quick before i actually end the video let's just take a look at the one minute see this extension here that we're getting off the 50 it is becoming divergent on the bottom which might get some people worried that it could come higher but you gotta stay focused on the higher time frames. I'm using the positioning here of everything to tell me that we're okay to still trade this direction, but I'm looking at the five minute breaking the 800, five minute TDI in the sell zone, 15 minute breaking that 200, 15 minute TDI kind of falling over here, 
We know the 15 minute can hold the eight EMA all day for candle, candle, candle. Remember some of the Eurocad trades last week? Just candle, candle, candle outside the eight EMA. So I'm trying to ride that wave a little bit here. Eight EMA all the way down. Stop is right here, as you can see. So we'll let it roll. I'm up 16. All right. Two minutes till seven o'clock. I'll come back on in a little bit and let you guys know if I take some off, if I lock the stop, whatever I do. Once we get up closer to 20 pips at one R, I'll take a little bit of the trade off for sure. There we go. Getting a little more push there. Cool. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, guys, it is just about eight o'clock. So I want to just walk you through here what's going on. I actually closed half the trade up about 33 pips here on the one minute as it pushed down to 2.0380. The reason I closed half the trade there, two reasons. The regressive risk that I applied to the first position as I closed that as it turned against me, so I didn't take the full stop loss with the full size, that kept the loss there smaller than it would have been had I just left it alone and gotten stopped. So when I got back into this trade, going the other direction, but with the same size, and I went up over 30 pips because I only lost 18 on that first trade, and I was smaller in it because I pulled myself out halfway at down 11, because I did that, being up 30 actually covered the loss and put me profitable now on the day. So this half of the trade that I just had running, now I have 25% running, was the profitable piece. Like the stop is locked, whatever happens here just adds to the win for the day. So I just took a little bit more because the one minute here on the right side is starting to break above the 50 EMA. TDI is starting to pull up into the buy zone a little bit and the ADR is maxed out. You can see it on the 15 minute over here on the left. The ADR is the green horizontal line. Average daily range, it says up here is 163. From pin high to pin low today, it's already moved 161. So average daily range might be kicking in, which means this thing might drop tomorrow and overnight, but right now it might be done moving because it did what it already has to do on an average day. So as I said, stop loss is locked. I'm up 11, 10 pips as it's pulling back here. It's probably gonna continue back and stop me out in profit. And that's why I just took the other 25% out. So I'm 75% out of the trade, profitable on the day and still holding EuroCAD with the stop and profit and this smaller trade on GBPNZD with the stop and profit as well, 2.0410. Now it's just about eight o'clock. I'm gonna let this trade continue to do its thing, whether it stops me in profit or if it wants to hold the eight EMA and come lower, that's fine too. But either way, it's a profitable day. And I hope that from the trades today, you take the piece, the most valuable piece being that with the regressive risk on the long position on GNZD, GBPNZD, as I close that trade, as it came down against me by not taking the full stop at the full position size, by making sure that if I do get stopped, I get stopped with a smaller piece than what I entered with. That's called regressive risk. And by doing that, I didn't need to get as much in distance and I didn't need to go back in the trade with bigger size. You go back in with the same size and you actually need less distance because you closed the trade for more than the first one got stopped at full size. I hope that I'm, I know I'm saying that a little confusing. I'm going to work on this more with you guys. I'm just being honest. It's something that I'm applying more and more to my trading over the last couple of months. And it's something I want to share with you to hopefully help you because even here today, it made it so that this 30 pips covered the trade, not broke even. It covered it and made me profitable. And that's huge. If I had taken the full stop on the first trade at the full stop loss, 20 something pips, I would not have been able to be been profitable today just off this short trade. I would have needed more trades or whatever it is, but because I was smaller in the loss and I let the win go to its full extent and then I closed it when it was up, that allowed the trade to be profitable. That allows the day to be profitable. So again, I hope that's the piece that you take out of today, if anything. If I take any other trades, I will come back on and update you guys. But as you can see, this GBPNZD trade is just about done as it's on its way back to my take profit now. So I appreciate you. Make sure you give me a thumbs up so we can spread this value to the rest of the community. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any future videos, and I'll see you guys in the next trade.